again, everybody, and welcome into the Shelby County High School Football Show alongside Andrew Simonson. I am Alec Etheridge, and it's another playoff edition of the Shelby County High School Football Show as we head into round two of the AHSAA playoffs as well as the state championship in the AISA. That coming up this week as well for the Cornerstone Chargers. So, Andrew, we've gotten through the first round of the postseason. A lot of excitement in that opening round. You look at the teams that we had advanced. We had three teams make it in the AHSAA. We had uh, Thompson do what they do best, play one of their best games of the season as they kick off the playoffs. We had Briarwood pick up a big road win against Carver Montgomery and Helena and Jordan Washington just going crazy there with seven touchdowns from Washington as that in that game as the Helena Huskies also advance in the Class 6A playoffs. So two Class 6A teams from Shelby County advancing on, Thompson advancing on as they look to win a fifth state championship in a row, and then Cornerstone making it to the eight-man state championship there in the AISA. So you look at the teams that we have left standing, you look back to last week, what is it that stood out to you most from the opening round of the playoffs? Well, I think we we both sat here last week and we thought we felt pretty confident that we were going to have at least three teams coming into this week. What I didn't expect, though, was that we'd get two shutouts in those two wins. Um, Thompson putting together just a phenomenal um, presence on defense uh, right here behind me last week, put, bringing up the pressure on basically every single drive and especially on third down to get them off the field quickly and get that passing attack back in action last week. And then Briarwood just putting – putting together a dominant performance, scoring on defense, getting that pressure on the Carver Montgomery, making life very hard for them. And I think that they played their best game of the season right there, brought a very good effort, and they're going to set themselves very, up very well for what's going to be a very big test this week for them. Yeah, big test to say the least as they welcome the number one team in the state in Saraland there to Briarwood Christian School uh, this week. So that's going to be a huge matchup. But for Briarwood, looking back at last year, a 29-year playoff uh, uh, the streak that was snapped a year ago and to respond the way that they did this year knew they had to get better on the defensive side of the football and defense is what won that game against Carver Montgomery we'll talk a little bit more about that later on as we talk about the Lions matchup with uh, uh, Sarah Land this week and a big opportunity there on their home field to advance to the next round of the Class 6A playoffs. Thompson, like Andrew said, a huge shutout victory, 42 to nothing over Florence. They're going to get a big rematch right here at Thompson High School with Bestavia Hills, one of their toughest region games this year. So a big opportunity for the Warriors as they look to get back to the semifinals. We'll talk about the streak they have there as well uh, as they continue uh, to have the opportunity to get into the semifinals. And Helena, with what Jordan Washington did, they're going to have a tough matchup this week against Hillcrest Tuscaloosa, a team that's unbeaten right now on the season. But if they come out and play like they did this past uh, Thursday night with what Jordan Washington did, throw, uh, threw for one touchdown, ran for six touchdowns, had more than 400 all-purpose yards there on the offensive side of the football, that makes them a team that's going to be a tough out here in round two of the Class 6A playoffs. You've also got Cornerstone, Andrew, going to the eight-man state championship this week. They pick up a big rematch victory last week. Going to have another rematch here for the state championship. But just tell me what impressed you most this past week from what you saw from Cornerstone and the opportunity that they're going to have this Thursday morning. I was very impressed by how they were able to come out and respond um, and just really put together a very solid performance against Evangel Montgomery, I think improved off the last time that they faced them. And I think that that now gives them the momentum that they were looking for after the last couple of weeks to go into what's going to be a very difficult matchup against Springwood, but one that they should be favored in um, going into that state championship game. Yeah, Cornerstone, a great chance to win a state title after coming up short in the semifinals last year, a chance for them to finish it off this season uh, on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. We'll talk a little bit more about their state championship game here in a few minutes as well. The other two teams that were in the playoffs for us last week, Shelby County and Vincent, they both lose uh, in the opening round. Shelby County falls in the opening round of the Class 5A playoffs. They trailed 62 to nothing at the 715 mark of the second quarter, so just not the start that you need there in the playoffs. But a team with so much uh, young talent, uh, a team that battled a lot of adversity down the stretch, gets into the playoffs. They ultimately lose 65-19 to in that game to Eufaula on the road. So we'll see how that kind of builds them for the future. As for the Vincent Yellow Jackets, led 9-7 to at the half, a hard-fought physical battle there in that matchup against Clark County. But the offense just never could really get it going there in the second half. 
as Clark County comes out, wins that one uh, there in the second half with uh, 13 unanswered points to pull away for that win. So Vincent and Shelby County now out, but we do have three teams from the AHSA advancing, and we've got the AISA state championship game taking place on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock for the Cornerstone Chargers. So we got a ton to get to, a ton of great matchups when you look at what's ahead. Thompson in a rematch against Vestavia Hills, a game that was tight for a long time in the regular season. Helena going up against number three, Hillcrest Tuscaloosa sitting at 11-0 and there. Uh, and Briarwood taking on number one, Sarah Land, also at 11-0. and So two of our teams, Andrew, they're going to get two undefeated teams in the top three of the 6A standings this week. So we got a ton to talk about. We're going to jump in. And of course, at the end of the show, we'll name our SCR stars of the week from the first round of the playoffs as well. So stay tuned for all of that, but we're going to jump in. We're going to start right now with the Thompson Warriors hosting the Vestavia Hills Rebels right here in a big second round matchup. A big opportunity ahead for the Thompson Warriors this week as they host Vestavia Hills in a rematch of a game earlier this season, a 21 to three win for Thompson in that game. And you know, if that old saying holds true that it's very difficult to beat a team twice in one year, this is gonna be a challenging game for Thompson, but this is a team that they've continued to get better as this season has progressed. And now a chance for them to make the play or the semifinals of the class 7A playoffs for the seventh year in a row if they're able to win this game. And that's just unbelievable. Obviously, we know that if they can get to a state championship, they'll be playing for a fifth consecutive state championship uh, win as they've made it to several state championships in a row beyond that as well. So this is a Thompson team. It's their time of the year. This is what they strive for all year to be in this position. And they're getting a Vestavia team that's shown a little bit of up and down play throughout the season. But their defense has just been so good at times and very consistent. And this game earlier in the year was a 7-3 to football game. They're late in that contest. Thompson ends up scoring two fourth-quarter touchdowns to make it look like a bigger score. But that Thompson defense is what did so well. And we talked about it a little bit last week, Andrew, that this is a defense that lost a ton of talent off of last year's team, a ton of Division I talent that's now playing college football. Yet they've come back this year and really don't seem to have skipped a beat at all with the way that they're playing right now. Giving up three in this one the first time around, you got to feel like the defense coming into this matchup is just going to be really tough for Vestavia to kind of find enough points to be able to not necessarily not stay in this game, but enough points to uh, be able to win this game between these two teams. Yeah, and they're coming off one of their most impressive results of the season, a shutout of a playoff team in Florence. And it's just the way that they were able to do that, like I said before, just bringing that pressure and making life very hard for Florence throughout the game, forcing them off the field very quickly and giving the offense more chances to work with, I think was what really made the difference last week. Obviously, the offense had a phenomenal day, but it was the pressure on defense that was really able to set up Thompson for success. Um, and I and I think that that's going to be key here as well because we know what Vestavia is going to bring on defense as well. I, I think it could be a very similar football game to what it was earlier in the season because I think both teams are doing really well right now. Vestavia with a little bit of trouble early against Austin last week, but still really settled into that game well and walked away with a favorable result. Um, but there's one thing that, um, that I mentioned in my game story last week that has really kind of stuck with me after Coach Freeman said it. Um, he mentioned that the um, that Florence brought a lot of blitz, which you could obviously see out on the field, which really opened up a lot of passing options and let Trent Seaburn go for the day that he had, obviously. But he thinks that the pressure that the young quarterback was able to face, as well as a growing offensive line, is really going to help them grow within these playoffs and better prepare them for results down the road. And I honestly think he was looking straight at this game with what Vestavia is able to load up in the box and just bring on a consistent basis. I really think that... Last week's result is going to prepare them pretty well for this week, and hopefully we see some of the fruits of that labor pay off this week against the Rebels. Yeah, I think that, I mean, you look at it, and this is a Vestavia team that held Thompson to their lowest offensive output of the season, uh, or I say that, they tied at holding them to the lowest output of the season with Hoover, and giving up 21 points to this Thompson offense. And it's an offense that can be dynamic at times, So you know that this Vestavia defense has a lot of talent. They're going to be able to go out there and play a a good football game. 
uh, giving up 12.6 points per game on that side of the football, but it's the offense that's going to have to score points against this very difficult Thompson defense. Now, if you're Vestavia, the positive there is, since your loss to Hewitt Trustville, which was just kind of inexplicable to me with the way that they played in that game as they lose that one 55-27. to I don't know how this defense gave up 55 points in any game this season, uh, and that's a game that they should they, – they look back on that one and feel like they left that out there. But you look at this offense, since that loss uh, to Hewitt Trustville, they've bounced back with a 50 to nothing win, a 45 to nothing win, a 44 to nothing win, and then they open the playoffs with a 38 to 17 win over Austin. So you hear that and you think the offense is improving, defense obviously continuing to play well, bouncing back from that performance that they had against Hewitt Trustville. Um, but that's obviously the weaker portion of their schedule as well. So now they've got to flip it up, uh, flip it around and turn it back on uh, against one of the toughest teams in the state, if not the toughest team in the state. And that's a lot to ask for when you look at what this Thompson team does so well. I do think Vestavia's defense can come out and have a game plan in place, but Andrew, can their offense do enough to move the football against this defense that's probably, you know, normally when they play a team a second time, they get better on the defensive side of the football, and Vestavia only scored three the first time around. Are the Rebels going to be able to find that magic to score enough points to win this football game? I think that they're going to find their moments of success. I really I really do think that this offense is too talented to not do something like that, even against a great defense like Thompson. But I think that if Thompson allows a play, they're going to get right back, and they're going to bring that pressure continually. We even saw some of that last week, a couple of big gains early on for Florence, and then the, the defense just straight locked in there. And, every, and everything turned out well for the Warriors. I kind of expect something similar this week um, between two really good matchups on either side of the ball. Um, I think that Thompson is going to have to come in, dictate the tempo on both sides, which is going to be interesting. Are they going to run the ball in between the trenches a lot like we saw in their last matchup against Vestavia, or are they going to let it fly a little bit more like we've seen over the last few weeks from Thompson? Um, I think I think it will be very fascinating to watch uh, both of these teams battle it out because they do so many things so well. But I think that Thompson has just found another gear right now, and they're they're doing too well for in all of those areas to not walk away with the victory. And like you said, this is a team that just only improves as the season goes on and against uh, opponents that they have faced before. I expect that to be the case again. I agree with that. I think that's the big statement there is that normally a Freeman coach team, a, a coach on DeFord defense, they get better that second time that they play you. That said, this is a game, like we talked about earlier in the show, it's 7-3. to three. Vestavia's got a chance to take the lead there late in that regular season matchup between these two, and they're not going to forget that. They feel like they could have won that game there in the fourth quarter, and they just let it slip away. But Thompson, I think, also has that on their mind. They know how close this game was the first time around, and they know that this may be their toughest matchup preventing them from getting back to the state championship. I think Vestavia still, even with that loss to Hewitt Trustville, was the second best team in this region from a standpoint of matching up with Thompson. I think this is Thompson's tougher matchup when you look at what's ahead, whether it's Hewitt Trustville or Hoover in the semifinals. So Thompson knows that first game around, they've got to come out, start faster in this game, get off to a quick start, score some points, give that defense a little bit of, of a cushion, and they know if they do that that it's going to be tough for the Rebels to be able to match what Thompson's going to put out there offensively. So I think at the end of the day, I do think that Vestavia's got a chance from a physicality standpoint and from what they're going to do to make life difficult for Thompson, but I think Thompson's going to get better from that first matchup that we saw earlier this season. I think the Warriors win this game. We'll see them uh, get off to a faster start than they did the first time around. Uh, but Vestavia is going to have some fight in them. This is going to be a tough football game for the Warriors. Ultimately, though, just too much talent out there for Thompson as they look to get back to the semifinals for the seventh year in a row. And I think that they do just that as they look to track, uh, track down a fifth state championship in a row as well. Well, the Helena Huskies couldn't have asked for a better start to the playoffs. A team that started 8-0, they lost their last two games to the regular season. Well, all of a sudden last week, they looked like that team that started 8-0. And a lot of that, Jordan Washington. Seven total touchdowns, more than 400 yards of total offense, 300 of that on the ground, six touchdowns on the ground. And then he got into the passing game as well. They, they decided to come up 
load the box a little bit, and Helena said, well, we're going to hand it to him and let him throw the football and tricky a little bit, and he did just that. So he finishes with seven total touchdowns. Helena goes on to win that one 58-28 to over Wetumpka to open the playoffs, and a big reason for Washington's success and for Helena's success in that game was their health. They had just about everybody back, and even Torrey Ward out there playing with a cast on his left wrist, uh, he was able to make an impact because that defense had to respect him, and they threw to him a couple of times. He made one catch in that game and almost made a catch in the end zone for a touchdown as well. Um, it, it's kind of it's just remarkable to see how this team has responded after losing two in a row. And to me, Andrew, this is a team that's healthier than they have been in a long time, and that makes this team dangerous. That's what makes them a team that could pull off an upset against Hillcrest Tuscaloosa as they hit the second round of the playoffs, go on the road to Tuscaloosa for this matchup, and it's a number three Hillcrest team sitting at 11-0. and And that talks about just how difficult Class 6A is this season when you've got a team like this at 11-0 and sitting at number three, and they've dominated just about everybody they've played. That said, first round of the playoffs, a little bit of a struggle not the offense that we've come, become accustomed to seeing. So we'll see if that has an impact on this game or not. But when you look at this Helena team and what worked so well last week, what is it that makes them a dangerous threat for this Hillcrest team this week? I think it's the fact that they're back to a diverse offense. Like We can obviously talk about Jordan Washington, as we should, because he had easily the best performance of the season across the county. But the offense as a whole, going for over 600 yards of total offense, what, what I said last week was that this team needed to be back fully healthy in order for them to unlock their full potential, regain some of the dimensions that they lost when Hunter Hale and Tory Ward went down. And I think that they've done just that. Everybody is back in an impactful role. We saw Hunter Hale, Nathan Jones both step up as well last week, um, helping Carson Acker. And then it's just the offensive line's performance, being able to just get a good heel to protection for Carson Acker and just let running backs like Washington and Santiago go through there as well it's a very complete offense and a very scary one as well and it's exactly what you want going into the a matchup against a Hillcrest defense it's allowing just 7.1 points per game this season we talk about some of their offense what they're able to do on that end scoring 40 points per game as well but it's the defense that's really been impactful as well one of the best in the state of Alabama and that's why the momentum is so crucial for Helena going into this one I think the confidence and what they were able to show last week is really going to let them find some success in this matchup. Um, And it has more confidence. I have more confidence in them going into this matchup than maybe I was a week ago. I agree. I think that this is a team that with the way that they played in that first round, I expected them to win, but I don't know that I expected them to score seven touchdowns from the running back and 58 points in that game. And, Just about everything was wearing. Defense came out a little bit sluggish there in the second half with the big lead. That's not necessarily a surprise. I'm almost okay with it because as hard as they were fighting, you also kept everybody healthy on that side of the ball. And going into a matchup like this, this is one where if you're Helena, you want it to be a battle of the trenches. You want this to be a physical slugfest uh, where you come out and you're basically just knocking each other around and you're able to sustain long possessions and prevent this from being a back-and-forth track meet. So that defense is going to have to come out fresh and ready to play. They're going to have to get off the field on third downs this week uh, because the offense isn't going to have that success that they had last week. They may have some, but like you said, this is a Hillcrest defense that's giving up just 7.1 points per game and it's been dominant. They have been a dominant football team. They're also scoring 40.8 points per game so far this season, and you look at that, that makes this a team that is going to be a tough out uh, when you look at Helena's chances in this football game, but for me, the Huskies, the thing that makes them special right now is the balance that you mentioned, and last week you got a, a, a Tory Ward with a cast on, and he's out there trying to make plays. And beyond the passing game, he's making blocks. He's doing other things that are going to not show up on the stats. Uh, But then you look at a guy like Nate Jones, and he was one that really stepped up in a big way, made several big catches. And when you've got Hunter Hell out there as well, now you've got three receivers all of a sudden that can make plays. So, Andrew, if I were to ask you real quick, what would be the focus – if you're that Hillcrest Tuscaloosa defense, what is the one thing you're trying to stop? I think that they're going to look straight at last week and, and try to stop Jordan Washington because because I think that that's really going to be what stands out from that result, even with the success of the pass game. 
So when you look at that, you you step up. You've got a guy that just ran for more than 300 yards on the ground and had seven touchdowns. Clearly, your focus defensively is we can't let this guy beat us. Anybody else can beat us, but this guy can't beat us. And so what that's going to do is it's going to put a lot more on Carson Acker. And this is a guy who's really stepped up throughout the season. If they win this football game, it's going to be because of him. And it's going to be because Hunter Hell is back and healthy. It's going to be because Torrey Ward's making big plays, whether it's catching the ball or blocking. And it's going to be because of a guy like Nate Jones, who just stepped up with close to 90 receiving yards and was able to get open, largely because of the space that the defense was giving the offense in the passing game. And Carson Acker quietly over 200 yards, a touchdown, beautiful touchdown pass to Hunter Hell there in that game against Wetumpka. That's where this game's won if Helena's going to win it. Jordan Washington can go out there. He's obviously going to have to find some big plays uh, to keep this team in it. But if they win this game, one defense to the passing game of Carson Acker. I don't know if you agree with that sentiment or not, but to me that's what can send Helena over the top if they play their best football game on the defensive side as well. Do you see them having enough, though, on that offensive side against a very, very good defense to be able to do enough to win this football game. I think they have enough to give themselves a great chance within this football game for all the reasons that you just said. I was going to mention that obviously the the best way to get themselves within this game for longer is to control the ball on the ground with Washington, but where it's going to be won and lost is within the passing game. Because if you prevent Jordan Washington from going for 200, 300 yards, there's a chance that Carson Acker is going to go for 200, 300 yards on his end of the field as well. Um, I think I think that that's really going to be where the impactful passing game lies is going to be where their success lies. And it's going to have to come down from a complete performance from every single weapon that Helena has, the offensive line as well, the defense bringing pressure and just taking away a lot of Hillcrest options on defense. I think if this team is able to get on the board early and then bring pressure on both sides, I think that we could see this be a very good football game for a very long time. I think at the end of the day, Hillcrest just has too much going in their favor um, for me to not pick them to get a victory here. But I would not be surprised if Helena comes out, gets a result in the fourth quarter, kind of like we've seen in some of their fourth quarter efforts this season, and really be able to send them over the top. Yeah, and, we, and I talk about this this offense and being able to throw the football. Knowing head coach Richie Busby, knowing this team, they're going to come out and they're going to want to run Jordan Washington. He, I mean, he's one of the best backs in the state. They think he is the best back in the state. I agree with them that he is right now, after last week, the best running back in the state. So you want to go out there and put your best player in an opportunity to succeed, and you really you want to win or lose with him. Um, so they are still going to run heavy, and they're going to go out there and try to get him some mix, some different plays that are going to work well uh, in this offense. And they want to physically wear down that Hillcrest defense as well. So that's going to be a big focus for them. That is what they're probably going to lean on. But I do think that Carson Acker can be the difference maker in this game. If you're not able to have that success running the football early, then opening up the passing game and taking advantage of what that defense is going to give you is going to be key. But at the end of the day, this is a Hillcrest defense that has given up 21 or less in every single game so far this season, 14 or less in 10 of 11, and then six or less in eight of 11 games. So you look at that, and they've played a decently difficult schedule. You don't feel like there's going to be a ton of points scored if you're Helena. So if you want to be in this game, your defense better be ready for a battle, uh, and they better come out and set a tone early in this football game. But what sticks out to me from last week, yes, they had a lot of success offensively, but Jordan Washington, that was a physical game. He was exhausted after it. He'll be ready to go. But that was a tough physical game. Beyond that, Hunter Hell still battling through some things. You can tell he was getting up slow from a couple of those big hits. Torrey Ward got the cast on. That's not coming off this week. I think they're just a little bit too banged up right now. And that's what worries me going into this matchup. They really need to be 100% going up against a team like this. Now, maybe this week of practice, they're refreshed. They're ready to go on Friday night. I think that they're going to be good enough to stay in this game and make this a good football game. But down the stretch, they just never have been 100%. And while they're close to that, they're just a little bit off right now. So we'll see if they can get it all together, if they can be 100% in this game. But that's what worries me the most from an offensive standpoint 
going up against a defense that's been arguably one of the best in the state on a consistent basis so far this season. So I think that gives a slight edge to Hillcrest in this game. But if Lena comes out and plays like they did last week, if that defense comes ready, they're healthy. The defense is healthy. They're ready to go. And so if they can come out and set a tone early in this game, it's going to be a very close football game. And in that case, you never know what can happen in a situation like this. So a very good opportunity for the Helena Huskies. Second round of the 6A playoffs, a chance to take on the number three team on the road and pick up a huge win here under head coach Richie Busby. We'll see if they're able to make that happen. It's going to be a lot of fun, a great opportunity for the Huskies this week. We'll see if they can can, can advance on to the quarterfinals of the Class 6A playoffs. After 29 years of making the playoffs, the Briarwood Lions had that streak snapped last year. Don't make the postseason this year. They bounce back in a big way. Not only get into the Class 6A playoffs, but they win their opening round matchup, Andrew, 25 to nothing in a shutout against Carver Montgomery. Now off to the second round of the playoffs, and your reward for that, the number one team in the state, the defending Class 6A state champion, Sarah Land. Luckily for Briarwood, it's on their home field, and it's a great opportunity for them to, if they win this game, quickly jump into that discussion of can Briarwood win a state championship this year. And defensively, after last week, they've got the defense to make that happen. This is a defense that's really good. The offense still going to have to make some plays and find some rhythm here down the stretch to have a big finish to the season. But, Andrew, you look at this Sarah Land briarwood matchup. Let's break that down. What's the key to you? for the Briarwood Lions going into this matchup and kind of breaking it down, what are they going to match up with against the Sarah Land team that many think is the best team in the state this season? And a lot of people think that for a reason because uh, this is a team that has the second highest scoring offense in the state across all classifications with um, with 54.4 points per game and nearly 600 points overall. And a lot of that is because of, of the weapons that they have on offense. Um, a Texas quarterback commit in K.J. Lacey, an Alabama wide receiver commit, in Ryan Williams, and that's really just the tip of the iceberg. A, a pair of a, of a couple of future SEC talents, and then the rest of the team is pretty deep from there as well, which means that Briarwood, I think that last week they had a really good preparation for them because they were able to go and give 100% from the time that that first whistle blew and really just brought the pressure and brought havoc to Carver Montgomery, really didn't let them get any ground within the game and, and brought pressure every single down in that matchup, and it's going to be a very similar effort to what they need in this game. I think if they're able to make it a little bit messy, take away some of those options on the edges, um, get some guys like Gray Rebels and Luke Reynolds to make some big plays in there, uh, you never honestly know. This could be a lot closer than a lot of people think just because of what this defense has been able to do within the last few weeks. I think that that sets them up for potential success within this matchup. You look at it, and this is a game where if you're Briarwood, defense is going to have to play well. Offense is going to have to play better than its average so far this season. But to me, defensively, you're going up against an offense that scored 42 or more in 10 of 11 games this season. That's remarkable in what they've been able to do. And they've scored north of 50 points in seven games this year. Like you said, scoring 54.4 on average. So this is an offense that's going to make plays. They're going to go out there, going to make plays. They're fast, they're athletic, they're physical. And so if you're that Briarwood defense, not only do you have to build off of last week's success and play a similar game, but you're also going to have to put on some of that tape from previous games this year. You look at Clay Chalkville to start the year, you're not going to face anybody any faster or more physical up front uh, then you're going to face in that offense in Clay Chalkville. And Benjamin Russell even, they've got a couple of really good playmakers that are very fast and athletic on that offense. And in that second half against Briarwood a few weeks ago, that's what cost Briarwood that game. Got off to a great start in that matchup, played great defensively overall against Clay Chalkville, giving up just 31 points in that game. Uh, we saw Thompson, where we are right now, give up 36 to Clay Chalkville. So Briarwood played arguably a better defensive game against Clay Chalkville than Thompson. Uh, and for the first half against Benjamin Russell, a similar story. Great defensive performance. They went into the half with a lead, come out in the third quarter, play well for the most part, and then that defense, that speed and athleticism of Benjamin Russell starts to pay off for them. Briarwood just couldn't keep up there in space. So if you're Briarwood with that defense – We've seen so much success from it. We've seen flashes of brilliance from it like we did last week and the plays they were able to make. This week going to have to be their best game 
of the season. But not only that, the offense going to have to play well. Also, an offense that's scoring just 20.5 points per game. Josh Thompson and those guys going to have to find a way to make some big-time plays, sustain drives, convert third downs, and really take some time off the clock in a game like this. So you look at that, Andrew, what's the biggest key for Briarwood to be able to walk away with a win, and can they put it together on both sides of the ball to be able to upset the number one team in the state? I think if you look at the offense, the key needs to be that ball control style of offense that they've shown in the past, be able to queue up some of the clock, give Sarah less chances to score because you know they're going to make some big plays and Briarwood's going to have to recover after those are made. But I think that the more they're able to get on the ground, the more success they're going to be able to find. But at the end of the day, you need to capitalize on those chances and you need to find ways to get into the end zone. Luckily, Briarwood has some of that and they have some talent within the offense, the passing game especially, but they're going to need to be able to put together their best effort of the season, their, one of their highest point totals of the season also most likely, in order to keep up with Sarahland, and I think that that's honestly the difference between these two teams right now. I think that Briarwood's defense could make it a bit more of a game than some might expect. Um, Sarahland obviously has a strong defense as well, though, um, and I think that that is going to somewhat limit what Briarwood is able to do. And when you, But when you match up these two offenses side by side, going up against defenses that allow a similar number of points per game, I really think that Saraland has the edge and will be able to make more plays in the end to walk away with the victory. Yeah, Saraland, on average, winning by close to 42 points per game so far this season. Scoring 54, giving up 13. They're scoring about 34 points more than Briarwood is on a given Friday night. So I think that ultimately the difference in this matchup, that offense just too good, but in addition to that, the defense playing well, you pair those two together. Sayerland should be the, the the winner in this game. They're coming off 54-14 to victory against McAdory. Uh, it's an offense that uh, has just been so successful consistently, even against some of those best defenses that they've played. They're the number one team for a reason. They're defending state champion for a reason. If you're Briarwood, your best chance, come out, create a little bit of chaos, hope for some blocked kicks, some turnovers, short field to work with offensively. But if that defense comes out ready and determined to play their most physical game of the year and to just chase every single thing down with 100% effort, that's what's going to give them their best chance. Last week, they determined the defense was going to win that game, and it did. It led to success. This week, you've got to determine the same thing and help your offense out, put them in good situations. You do that, you're going to have a chance to win this football game and pull off a very shocking upset here across the state, send shockwaves across the state, uh, I should say, if you upset the number one team. But regardless, into the second round of the playoffs, after missing last year, great bounce back year for head coach Matthew Forrester and this Briarwood football team setting up a bright future with what they've got there at Briarwood and now you get to host the number one team win this one you instantly become a uh, a, a favorite to compete for a state championship this year so a huge opportunity on their home field for Briarwood this week we'll see if they can pull off that upset against the number one team. Well, the stage is set for the Cornerstone Chargers as they get to the eight-man state championship. This Thursday morning, they're going to take on Springwood down at the Crampton Bowl in Montgomery at 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, a chance to win the eight-man state championship. Andrew, coming off a 44-20 to win against Evangel, that was a rematch from a game earlier in the season, and Cornerstone improved. That's something that I thought that they would be able to do, especially on the defensive side of the football. To me, that was huge going into this matchup. Another rematch with Springwood in a game that they won in the regular season, but also has some implications from a game last year that they won in the regular season by two points similar to what they did in the regular season against Springwood this year, and then they went into the playoffs and they lost to Springwood in that matchup. So, you know, this year Springwood wants redemption from that regular season game, but Cornerstone at the same time, even though they won that one, they want redemption from last year's loss in the playoffs. So a lot for both of these teams, momentum-wise and hunger-wise, to want this game, and then you throw in that it's for the state championship. What's the expectation and the outcome between these two teams going into the state championship matchup? I think it's exactly like you mentioned. I think that Cornerstone is going to look to get that improvement over what they able they were able to do in the regular season. They needed to gut out an overtime win to get one against Springwood, similar to what they had to do last year in the regular season. And you know that Coach Lee and all the players and everybody at Cornerstone Christian have had that loss in the semifinals last year in the back of their minds 
all season. It's why they wanted to come in and beat Springwood in the regular season, and it's why they want to come out here and finish business in the state championship game against them this year. And I think it's going to take a, a lot of a similar effort to what they were able to do against Evangel Montgomery, get off the field a little bit more on defense, because we know what the offense is able to do. The offense has been a very consistent unit overall as a whole, uh, but it's the defense that when they step up, they win games for this bunch. And especially in eight-man football, we've mentioned it all season, it's the defense that truly separates the pack from the elite. And I think that if, if they want to be an elite team and win the state championship, it's going to have to come down to their defense. And I think that they have the weapons to do so. I think that they're going to be able to come out here, attack this game, and bring a consistent level of effort across both ends, even if they allow a couple of big plays to Springwood, which they which they might because Springwood is a very talented team. I think that they're going to have enough offensive firepower on the other end of the field to match. Zeke Adams just playing another phenomenal game last week with some weapons around him that, that did well as well, like Keaton Keefe, Noah Schober, and a lot of the other players that they have as well. T.C. Sanders has been a solid option for them as well. I think that overall... Cornerstone just a very complete team and one that I think is going to be able to get over the hump this year and win that state championship for the first time in eight-man football. Yeah, you touched on it, the defense. The defense played so well last week against Evangel Montgomery. That's a team that was a good offensive football team. They played well against Cornerstone offensively the first time around, but that defense stepped up for Cornerstone in that win a week ago, and I think that's the biggest plus for them going into this matchup, a game they won by two points in overtime earlier this year. These two teams very evenly matched. So typically what's going to make the difference when you're going up against an evenly matched team one, avoid turnovers, but two, play strong defensively. And I think if Cornerstone carries that defensive approach into this game, then they're going to walk away with the state championship. But Springwood looking for a little bit of redemption. They also lost the state championship last year, so they want to get over that hump this year, played for it a year ago. They've got that experience. Will the moment be too big for Cornerstone? That's what you've got to ask yourself. Can Cornerstone go out there and stay poised, composed in their biggest game of the season? Pressure's going to be on. The nerves are going to be there. I think ultimately if that defense comes out, plays well, that settles down those nerves, helps them get off to a strong start on a big stage in the biggest stadium they've played in all year. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle that moment. But they've been the best team this year. They've been the most consistent team this year. You just got to do it one more time, and I think that they get that done. Zeke Adams, a big key in that, the way that he plays offensively, but that defense kind of improving and getting better throughout the year. They've been pretty consistent, but now they're playing what looks to be their best football of the year on that side of the football as well. I think Cornerstone walks away with the win just like Andrew does. They win the eight-man state championship there in the AISA. What a huge end to the season that would be for the Chargers. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how that one unfolds as Andrew goes down and covers that one from the Crampton Bowl, the AISA eight-man state championship game this Thursday at 10 a.m. That brings us to our SCR Stars of the Week segment and the opening round of the playoffs. Always fun to see those guys who kind of step up, lead their team in that big situation. And we have to start with my star, my only star this week, and that's Jordan Washington. He just lit it up last week in all facets of the game. He had a couple of big catches in that one. He had several big runs in that one. Very physical game from him in the ground game. And then a touchdown pass. He finishes with more than 400 all-purpose yards. He goes 34 carries, 347 yards on the ground, running the football, two receptions for 60 yards, and a 23-yard passing touchdown as well. So he did literally just about everything he could possibly do in that 58 to 28 opening round win, seven total touchdowns, six running the football, one passing the touchdown and head coach Richie Busby said he's only had one other player play for him that had a similar performance and that was our Darius Stewart, very talented player uh, as most of you know. And so to be put in that same kind of category is remarkable for Jordan Washington. He's going to need every bit of that this week as they take on a very good Hillcrest Tuscaloosa team. So a great shout-out and performance there by Jordan Washington in the opening round of the playoffs, easily one of the top running backs in the state this season. Andrew, what about your two stars of the week and the performances that you uh, thought were noteworthy from that opening round? Uh, well, my, my first star goes – to somebody who I saw on this field just a week ago, and that was Trent Seaburn, quarterback for Thompson. We could have mentioned him a lot of times this season, rightfully so, for a lot of his performances. 
but it's what he was able to do in one half of football last week that just really caught my attention. Um, 25 for 29 passing or 343 yards, three touchdowns. One of those incompletions was an interception, but he recovered from that very well. You could just really tell that he was in control of this game in the first half. Uh, just really getting out to his receivers across the field very consistently. And it was how he dealt with the pressure as a very young quarterback that I think was really impressive for him. Um, an, another postseason opportunity for him and just another chance for him to shine as well. I was blown away by what he was able to do within that half. Looked like a true elite quarterback and and he showed his skill last week. So they'll need another big performance from him going forward to face some more difficult opposition, including Vestavia Hills on Friday. But for now, Trent Seabird is my first star of the week. And then my second star of the week, I couldn't overlook somebody from the Briarwood defense, and that'd be Luke Reynolds, finishing with two interceptions. Um, anytime you're able to get two interceptions in the game, you're probably going to make your way onto this list. But he also had 59 rushing yards, 22 passing yards, and a touchdown. Um, just an overall complete performance from him that was able to help secure Briarwood the victory. There were so there were so many great plays that were made across the field for Briarwood to pitch that shutout and be able to walk away and with such a dominant win. But Luke Reynolds stood out to me, and that's why he is my second star of the week. Yeah, great performance from both of those guys. Trent Seaburn still a freshman. I think we forget that just because of how one he played last year, but two how he has stepped up as a mature quarterback this year. And Luke Reynolds, man, the way he played in that game last week was remarkable. Big, big reason that Briarwood was able to pick up that win against Carver Montgomery. A couple of honorable mention players, AJ Green and Mike Dujon here at Thompson combined for a strong effort there. Uh, really outside of the running game. Both of them big in the in the passing game, 98 and 94 yards, 98 for A.J. Green uh, and 94 for Dujon receiving. Uh, and then you add in a receiving touchdown for Dujon and uh, uh, Green with two rushing touchdowns uh, and 51 yards on the ground. So big performances from those two guys. Carson Acker, the quarterback at Helena, Flew a little bit under the radar with Jordan Washington's performance, but 10-17, 201 yards, and a great touchdown fit into a tight window right in the corner, front corner of the end zone uh, to Hunter Hell as he finished with 201 yards and one touchdown. And that one, and Nate Jones, I, I think the difference maker this week if Helena wants to win, he stepped up and made some very good catches, showed some uh, great agility after the catch, four receptions, 96 yards, uh, or 86 yards, no touchdowns in that game, but really set them up in some big situations there. He's a guy that I think can be a huge difference maker this week. Love seeing what he gave them a week ago and just adds a little bit more of a dynamic ability there for that offense. Zeke Adams, cornerstone, another guy that's going to have to step up big this week. 261 yards rushing, 169 yards passing. He has that kind of performance this week against Springwood. Cornerstone's going to win a state championship. A great performance from him there in that semifinal win. So some great performances there from all of those guys. Big opportunities for all of them again this week on an even bigger stage as they look to help their team. One, either win a state championship if you're Cornerstone. Uh, two, advance to the semifinals if you're Thompson. Or three, advance to the quarterfinals of the 6A playoffs if you're Helena or Briarwood. So some great opportunities and big stage ahead for all of those players. We'll see how they handle that pressure and the situation here this week. Well, that brings us to the end of the Shelby County High School football show. Going into the second round of the playoffs, big week ahead. All the games we have are going to be very exciting. Andrew, what are you looking forward to most as we hit this big week of high school football action? I'm looking forward to see how the Class 6A teams fare in their biggest test of the season. Two of the top three teams are going to be battling teams from Shelby County with Helena taking on number three Hillcrest and Briarwood taking on number one Sarah Land at home. I've been really impressed by what, what both Briarwood and Helena have been able to put together this season. I, I consider their seasons both successful regardless of how they finish up on Friday night. But if they're able to come out and at least put together a great effort, if not get the victory on Friday night, that really says a lot, not just about how good they are this season, but where they're going in the future. Yeah, I mean, if it, either if both those teams win, we get a quarterfinal battle with them and guarantees us a team in the semifinals. But just a great opportunity for Shelby County as a whole. Two, two matchups like that against the top three teams in the 6A classification would be awesome to see them win. Going to be very tough to see either of them win. But great opportunities in some big 
big games there. The Thompson Warriors, I think if they win this one, I think they're back in the state championship game again this year. I think they're better than both Hewitt and Hoover. Going to be tough matchups there in the semifinals. Don't get me wrong. They could very easily lose those games the second time around. Uh, But I think this is the team that matches up the best against Thompson from a defensive standpoint. So a big opportunity for them here on their home field to get back into the semifinals for the seventh straight year. Do that. I think this is a team you'll see playing in the state championship game yet again here in Class 7A. So going to be a big one right here at Thompson High School and across the county. Briarwood at home as well. Helena on the road in Tuscaloosa. And then we've got Cornerstone down in Montgomery at the Crampton Bowl battling for the eight-man state championship. Follow along for all the coverage. I'll be out this week, but Andrew's going to have you covered with our great team of freelancers as well. It's going to be a great week of high school football playoff action. Can't wait to see how it all unfolds. Everybody enjoy your week, and we'll see you later this week for a big week of playoff action.